Perez. Morto makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. Hello, and welcome to a Burkamp Wonderland and Arsenal podcast, a podcast that me and Danny don't want to do. We just want to, <laughs> we just, want to just kind of take our minds off the rest of the evening and not really discuss anything. Uh, but uh, Danny is here with me again this evening to discuss the review of the 3-0, 3-0. Well, actually, Danny, did it, hold on, did it finish 3-0? Because I stopped watching after the third goal. Oh, I was gonna it did. It did it. Okay, okay. Because they could have, they could have scored more. Because who knows? They could well have done. They could well have done. Um, yes, we're here to discuss the three 0 loss to Brighton. So, Danny. Hmm. Well, you can't, you can't be too sad about. It. I mean, when Man City, this is a problem when, when teams play kick off at different times during the day. It's like your kids and next door's kids have, have got a party on the same day, and next door they've got uh, they've got the magician, the elephant, the the the, the party, the bouncy cars, the water slide, and all the kids have been there. And then it comes to your kid's birthday, and you've got a manky clown. No one's going to want to come. Really, all the, all the, is it going to be the, the pa- clown? Is it going to be the clown from Uncle Buck? <laughs> it's going to be. Yeah, gets it's, turned away. <laughs> it's going to be something like that. But you have to take everything into context, and you look at the fact that we all know that one of the the best football analogies is the Premier League is a marathon, not a sprint, and we sprinted for ninety percent of that season. We were top for I think thirty out of thirty five weeks, which is better than any season we have ever done, apart from I think the Invincible season might have matched it. Uh, points wise, we've already uh, we've been close to the, the, the invincible season. We've beat load most of our other seasons. Goals wise, we've been banging in loads of goals. But then you've got a couple of little special things that have happened today that, that are going to make you smile. Brighton have gone above Spurs. D. That means Spurs might not make the Europa League, no, the Conference League, and that will bankrupt them because they'll have no money and they're going to have to sell Kane, and then well, that's going to be a nightmare for them. But it's been an amazing season. I've loved the majority of it. And this game season is probably three games too long for us. And you saw at the end of the game, the players were absolutely, as yeah, my mother would fun. say, they were banjaxed. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we never had the legs. We knew we never had the legs. C- uh, City have got the squad depth. We don't have the squad depth. That's something that we're going to rectify in the summer. And as I said, and that, and that doesn't and today's result doesn't change how well the summer and how well the summer's going to go and and the, and the moves that we're going to make. Uh, you know, one of the players that we were looking at was Caicedo and uh, Jesus Christ, what a game he had today. Once again, performing in that right back spot. Agreed, they played some really dirty tactics today. I think a lot of teams are realising that you can get under Arsenal's skin by playing some dirty tactics. We've seen that um, in uh, bucket loads this season with City employing it, Newcastle and uh, and, and everyone else uh, getting involved when it comes to to doing what they have to do to, to kind of stop the Arsenal ball from rolling. And that's what's happened today. Um, so yeah, no real changes to the team. KT jumps in for Zinni. Zinni was injured. Um, but apart from that, not really much else to say. So let's say hello to everybody who's who's come to join the uh the 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 the, the bitterness, the <laughs> reject in your in your heart. It's come it's to, gonna be a difficult, it's gonna be a difficult podcast, but we'll get through it. Come to see the football vomit that is this show. <laughs> Boy 10 is there, uh wants me, 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 me a Timo. Beat Ben White every single time he played up against him. Matomo, yeah, Matomo was. I, I've rated Matomo all season. Yeah, really, really like good. him. There's rumours that we were we've been looking at him now for since the winter transfer. It'd be very interesting to see us pick up another Brighton uh, player like we've done with with Ben White and uh, and Trossard. Um, Trossard getting an interesting reception from Brighton fans. This is very yeah, weird. They weren't overly bothered, uh, were they? Yeah, they. Uh, so yeah, I. Matoma's fantastic, and and Ben White. As much as I say it all season, I really like him. It shows once again when you know he lacks because he he got he goes square on, which is what centre backs do a lot of the time. So he's still got that in him, um, and uh, it, it cost us today uh, quite a number of times. Uh, so yeah, Ben White had a game that he he'd want to forget. That's for sure. So, uh, but yeah, carry on. Who else is here? 
Ben is there on Twitch, U2B, lovely, and lots of numbers. Thanks, guys. This is going to be tough to get through. I only want to, if we can get this done in an hour, that'd be lovely. So, uh, there again, the first half wasn't really much to talk about there. Nope. Uh, boy, tenses, I don't even mind that we lost. The players were never meant to be in this position. It's really just a matter of Arteta having landed as a manager, coach. Very wise words indeed. Formerly knows us here. Well, weren't players knackered last season as well? Same point in the last season, we fell apart. And those also puts knackered players. That's the manager's fault, isn't it? Well, you got a few injuries of players that could have come in and, yeah. and taken the weight off. But yeah, well, speaking of which, um, I really felt like we missed Zin Zinchenko today. I know that he hasn't got the defensive qualities, but we really struggled in the first half to really get our feet under the table and, and we lacked in the attacking threat. And I think Zinchenko not being in the side today really started to show it and rear his ugly head a lot earlier than I hoped it would have um, because we know that he's out for the remainder of the season now and Kieran Tierney is deputising for him. And we all like Kieran Tierney he comes in and offers fantastic defensive outlet but he's attacking threat and he's in you know he's inverted wing back play if we if we aren't able to spread the play then we really really struggle because he hasn't got that uh he hasn't got that in in you know inverted wing back role ability so yeah it's a real struggle real real struggle so yeah when it's not knackered it's, it's injuries uh squad depth uh, and everything like that yeah, well, it is. You could just see everybody. When, when Man City have gone out there and smashed them 3 0 and then done it, done it with one hand time behind their back, you've got to look at it and go, well, they tried. It's, it's, they were deflated from the moment the game kicked off. And Brighton are the ones who had something to play for. I mean, we can't finish third. We can't. We almost definitely ain't going to finish first. No, and Brighton done, have, have Europe to play for for the first time in their career. So, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Brighton, this is the best Brighton team uh, mm. in Brighton's history. They've got an opportunity to go. Uh, is it? Sorry, is it? They've never been to the Europa League. No, they've never been in Europe. Never been to Europe. So they've got a chance right. here for. They've got a chance as well for potential Champions League if they continue this form for the remainder because they've got the extra games. Um, so they could potentially go into a Champions League. It would be an interesting sight to see Brighton there. Um, but you know they've played well this season. You know I think you know it's difficult. It's it's straight after the game tomorrow. Uh, I think our responses might be slightly different. But right now, it's still raw. Brighton played some dirty tactics. Referees allowed a lot of it. Oh, it was shit. Like, it was... Even it was even the joke. injury to uh, Incenzo, um, whatever his name is, the little Paraguayan kid who oh, I think is pretty decent. Um, yeah. You know, he got the injury and he walked off the entire foot foot of the pitch and the referee just allowed it. Didn't let him... Didn't tell him to go off um, yeah. at the closest side and walk around. It was just like, this is all getting just a little bit silly now. They're just, they're just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. Um, but yeah, boy, ten uh, has got Matomo uh, would improve our uh, our entire attack. I like uh, I like Matoma. I really really rate him. He's also got apparently a degree in uh, dribbling. A degree in it. A de He's got a degree in dribbling. I'm pretty sure that I'm correct with this, Matoma. Oh, uh, that's not something I've heard of before. Hey, you know uh, that you dribbling. say it does sound. A Sounds familiar in in a way. But oh, he got why. his university thesis in dribbling. I don't know what that. I is. think I might have heard that on a podcast somewhere. Yes, he studied he studied dribbling in university. Oh, and uh, I hope he got an A for it because he's, he. Probably, uh, well, he did. I'm sure he did. Yeah, <laughs> and sure demolition of of Ben White. He should have uh, did he some uh, do that as well because uh, yeah, that was definitely uh, part of the problem tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Who else we got here today, Danny? Who else we got? Um, or are you doing something? Uh, Loki is there uh, giving up. Never a good look. And lots Agreed. of numbers. Trossard was poor as well. Not surprised, with, uh, though, against his former club. And Boy says, yes, Danny, he wrote the thesis on the mechanics of dribbling. We go. And uh, it follows that up with Ben White. I had no clue how to contain him. Uh, what notes did you make for the, for the first half? Because I made... Um, I made two. <laughs> because I made notes. I made notes, but a lot of it's just jibber jabber. Well, I just put. Oh, when you're yeah, let us know when you're ready, and I'll tell you the two notes that I've made: tenth minute and eighteenth minute. Cause... Oh, okay. Shall I? Shall I do a few of my notes up until yeah. your note, and then you that, can interject with your yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Erdogan kicked in the face first minute um, from uh, Estupinian, kind of set the tone of the game within the first minute because he didn't give a flying fuck that he pelted the ball, you know, point blank into his face. 
Um, so that, that was, was uh, that was on purpose. But, but it kind of it kind of set the tone. I don't know about you, Danny, but it set the tone for the remainder yeah. of the game. It was just oh, it was just bullshit. Get away with it. It was just bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It took like thirty five minutes before the referee pulled out his first card. Um, nice pushing from Arsenal. Saka wins the ball. Odegaard should have shot. Odegaard not uh, releasing uh, a shot like he usually does. Um, and then Caicedo fouling Martinelli. Martinelli obviously fouled someone a little bit early. He's doing that thing again when he jumps in. Um, 15th minute, Odegaard with a with a trademark shot. Have you got something? 11 minutes, sorry. What were you going to say? No, you I've got something, something on, the, on, on the 10th minute. It was minute. Um, Martinelli is starting fires he can't put out. Yes. Oh, I like that. That's that's uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, because I'm going to talk about it again here. Um, 16th minute, Brighton ter- taking turns on fouling Martinelli. Uh, they're yeah. all just rotating, fouling him. Uh, and then it takes one minute later and he's off injured. Trossard comes on, and I wasn't exactly thrilled at that. And Trossard just had a game that he wants to forget. I think both Brighton boys, ex Brighton boys, Ben White and Trossard, had a game that they would want to forget. Um, when's your next note, Danny? Sorry, 18th minute. I've put Go on then. Martinelli off for Trussard, and that's that's it until the 50th. Oh, okay, minute. was that it? Yeah, mind blowing stuff, Danny. Thank <laughs> you so much. To be <laughs> fair, <laughs> trying to trying to make notes on this game and staying invested in oh, this game for 90 minutes. Loads, loads really? Oh, I've but... got nothing, uh, oh. pretty much. And there's uh, maybe like three or four, but not really anything. <laughs> well, um, Arsenal's really sloppy out, here, mixed first 30 minutes. Um, and then Trossard with a shot over the bar hits it with the hits it you know with his laces and goes over the bar. Um, Brighton ending the first half better. Ferguson showing why he's a really hot talent at the moment at only 18 years old. Yes. Um, Saka miss, misses a chance at 46 minutes. 47th minute. This bit made me giggle. This is probably the only bit that I enjoyed about the entirety of the football match. <laughs> Linesman tries to give a, thro- um, a f- an offside for a throw on. Did you see that? Did you hear about that? So a throw on. A Kieran Tierney throws the ball to Trossard, who's in an offside position, and creates a run, which gives uh, an opportunity to somebody. I don't know who it was. Um, and uh, yeah, the referee, the linesman, sorry, put his uh, put his flag up for the uh, for throw on to give it offside, and then sheepishly put it back down again, realizing you can't be offside when it comes to a throw on. So That's it kind of, of for me, basic things. yeah, for me, it sums up the entirety of how poor the officiating are in this country. They don't do anything now to the point where they don't even realise the basics of the football match anymore. That's basically where I stand with that. It's almost um, like and... they didn't want to upset anybody today by making any kind of oh, well, decisions. that's where we are. You know, that's, it, it, that's... I mean, Casado was it? In, he, he held up three fingers. Three fingers. Third time you've done that. Oh no, th- yeah, but you've nearly killed someone three times. It should have been. And then Gary Neville going on. Oh, Martinelli should have been sent off for that. I think. What the fuck are you talking about, you moron? He didn't even get a yellow for it. Gary Neville was. Was uh, touching himself inappropriately all the way through this game. He always is. Freak. He always is touching himself inappropriately. With regards to the Martinelli situation with the tackle and stuff like that on Matoma, uh, uh, both of them had their eye on the ball. What you've got to remember is Martinelli has to be strong. Once again, I feel like it's what you're you're uh, having a pop at someone for being bigger and stronger than the other person. It's like a negative. Matomas are short. He went low as well. Martinelli's looking to think it's going to be a shoulder to shoulder but a battle. Not Matoma going low under the ball. Um, so it just is what it is. It looked in the replays, it's always going to look worse off than it is. But in the when you watch it in the cold light of day, you realize that Martinelli thought he's going to go, you know, shoulder to shoulder with someone and ends up going against the smallest guy on the pitch who gets cleaned out. Um, it just it just is, and it's just unfortunate. Um, but yeah, squad depth is is what we're lacking. Um, uh, Brighton employing some day tactics, Arsenal finished the extra time section of the of the half quite strong. But overall average first half, Gabriel Jesus really showing again when he doesn't get going, he really doesn't get going. Holy Jesus Christ. And I know I get a lot of pop from people saying, oh, you know, we don't really need a striker. We need to get a central midfielder. And I say in a dream world, we can't, we have both. They're not mutually exclusive. But in situations and in games like this, having someone that can hold up the play in, in, a, strong, in a strong way or being able to be on the end of a ball from across, you know, like City have got the Haaland thing. I know, obviously, we you know, Haaland's just a fucking machine. But uh, in the T-1000, as Danny calls him, you know, at the end of the day, we need another option. We need a we need something that gives something a little bit different. We've got a lot of strikers that kind of do the same thing. Trossard coming on and doing it throughout the season as well. He kind of plays the same way that Jesus plays. And don't get me wrong, when it works, it works wonderfully. It works beautifully. But when it doesn't work, 
we see games like today and we need something else. We need something else, Danny. We need something else. We do. And uh, I think in the summer we will get it. There is some, I mean, party, that was might as well have been party's farewell, farewell game for us. If I was Arteta, I'd say last two games of the season, completely meaningless. Saka, all of you lot, Odegaard, go on holiday. Your season ends tonight. Go home. Go and do, go and do whatever you want because it doesn't matter what happens in the last two games of the season. We're not going to finish third. We're not going to win the title. Mathematically, we can win it. But if anybody thinks a team that are 21 games unbeaten are going to lose their last four Premier League games, then you, you need to go and change your crack. Do you, know, do you know what, Danny? Right? You know, I've been super optimistic and trying mm, to be so right, yeah. you know, really positive. It's like you're constantly, constantly trying to be positive towards a situation that's so negative and mm. it's ended up slapping you in the face, like it has done to us tonight. We're trying to still grab positives out of this. Um, but I really thought City would struggle with the Real Madrid game and the fact that they've got Everton away from home at Goodison and now they've got Real Madrid again. And then they've yeah, got we're quite, kidding um, ourselves, aren't we? It's like going, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 as they say, clutching at straws. Clutching it's like you when you're having a barbecue, you're hoping and clutching at straws it's going to be a lovely hot sunny day with no rain and no cloud. Never fucking Yeah, is, that's what I'm it? hoping for this Saturday for yeah, my never is. Arsenal celebrating the, you know, it's, the league. You know, it's going to snow. <laughs> Of course, it's going to fucking snow. It's fucking ridiculous. I can't rely on anything uh, in this world no more. Can't yeah, rely but, on I mean, anything. But, but the whole time we've gone, it's been an amazing season. Yes. We shouldn't be where we are, but yes. they have done fantastic. And how long can we keep going with one squad? We haven't even got a a, a best 11 of, of, of yep. top quality players. Man United, Man City have got two, two squads of that. And also, another little cherry on the cake, if Man City go to Chelsea this week, they win the title at Chelsea. Now that, that's going to bring a wry smile to everyone's face, hasn't it? The team that about Chelsea, Chelsea. Yep, agreed, agreed. But um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we are 81 points. City on uh, on 85, they've got a game in hand, so they're going to stretch it now and it's going to stretch a little bit more. But uh, we were going toe-to-toe with the best team in Europe. Let's be honest. If you didn't see the City-Real Madrid game, um, City had that. Yeah, City had that. There was obviously talk about their goal should have been disallowed because the ball went out of play. But regardless, they should have had that. They're now going to be playing at home at the empty head against Real Madrid. I I think City win it. And I think City go on and win the Premier League and the Champions League because Haaland is the, as Danny says, the T1000. Uh, And we went, but we went toe to toe with this team for 95% of the season. We've got to commend ourselves for that. We and have we've had to some commend amazing wins. We, we've beaten Spurs home and away. We've beaten yep. Liverpool. We've beaten Man United. We've beaten Chelsea. And uh, there's only there's only two teams that have ruined us this season. One will finish top of the table, and the other one will finish bottom of the table. Southampton and Man City. A tale yep. of two cities. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. What else we got in the chat? Um, Loki's saying that he would like uh, Lu- um, Lu- Luca Tony. I'd like Luca Tony. Oh, Luca Ivan- Tony. <laughs> Ivan Tony. He's put Tony and confused me. Rudy he's says Tony. Uh, he's uh, obviously he's going to get suspended, isn't he? So we don't know how long that's going to be. Well, suspension unless he signs for. for Man City, then the 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 charge oh, yeah, will true, just magically disappear. So that's, that's his true, only that's chance true. of getting away with it. Yeah, uh, Rudy, Rudy says Tony likely to get suspended because of the betting issue and lots of numbers. Yeah. Everton were clueless today. They clearly don't care if they get relegated. Balance of probability is though they won't. Cruz they, did Vanta. you watch the game, Danny? Did you watch the no, game? The Ever- I, I, I watch it for fantasy football. So um, Everton did well for about 10 minutes. That was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> 10 minutes. They had, they had 10 minutes in the bank and they went, right, we're cashing out. See you later. <laughs> Cruz Banter is a Chelsea fan. He says, don't mind uh, as a Chelsea fan. Don't mind as a Chelsea Yeah, to, to be honest. Rather City than you lot. Well, you know, just like when you won all your titles, you bought them. Uh, he says, sorry, I just need to be sorry. That's all right, uh, mate. You're jumping in a random Arsenal podcast. You must yeah. be very, very uh, alone. Yeah, but looking at Chelsea at the moment, their form, their 17th. The, in the, in the, the form table, Chelsea 17th, Spurs 18th. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a happy season for me where those two scum teams are back down where they belong. Uh, Boy 10 says, I expected a draw loss to Brighton since the film on Miatoma came in. Uh, the league was lost at Liverpool, West Ham, Southampton and Everton. There's been some shocking um, losses this season. I mean, the, the Everton one, the Southampton one. 
but these things happen. You you get better. And next season, we're going to be a better team than we are now. But it is like I was talking to Sophie on Twitter from the Highbury squad. She said, there's going to be a lot of players that we like that are going to have to leave the club. I think maybe Eddie, uh, uh, El Nenny, been saying this all, Holdy, season. all of these yeah. players. I mean, yeah, I'm not even sure season. if Turner's a decent backup because uh, he had a couple of good games and he had well, a couple Matt of... Matt Turner, the, the yeah. Yankee keeper. Oh, yeah. I've, I haven't liked him since the moment he walked in. I like his attitude. He seems like a chirpy little lad who followed Arsenal because he randomly chose it on FIFA one day and all of a sudden he's a fully-fledged Arsenal fan. You know, it's a bit like listening to, what's his name, who joined City and went, oh, I've been following him since I was a kid. It went well, League Two. It's just it's jibber-jabber. Um, I, he's not good enough to play. He can't play with his feet. But it's not going to be good for him being the, the American number one keeper and not playing regular football. That he's, That's got to be playing on his mind. He could go to Germany. A lot of German, Americans go and live in Germany and go and do that. A friend of mine, Danny's American. He lives in Germany. He's a Kaiser. No, um, Eintracht Frankfurt fan. I was talking to him. Mm-hmm. One who got me into UFC. Sometimes he watches the pods. Hello, Dan. If indeed you are watching, uh, I took him to quite a few Arsenal games back in the two uh, thousand, something like that, late nineties, early noughties. Uh, mm-hmm. Stan says, "Very sad seeing people leaving early. It's not easy finishing second in the league." And I, for one, have enjoyed the ride. I have definitely enjoyed the ride. It has been. It's been do you know what? Right? If we took away this weekend and a few other little situations, it's been such a great season of football. I've really yeah. loved it. It's been fun to watch Arsenal again this season. It's not ended the way we wanted it to, but we kind of knew that in the back of our minds that was probably going to happen with the lack of squad depth that we've got. It was going to be burnout, and it's shown. That's true. It has shown. But it's been fun, and it's been better than any other season in the last God knows how many years. We can't complain too much, but it's you can look at it as what could have been, but it's better just to look at if what it actually was. We were one of the most entertaining football teams in the league, in the, in the world, I'm going to say. We were stunning to watch, and... Uh, yeah, I'd rather have a season like that than finishing eight for two seasons in a row. Uh, quote from Rudy, Roy Keane, Arsenal just look like they have run out of steam physically and mentally, but we cannot be too hard on Arsenal. It has been a very good season. They have just come up short on Sky. And then Rudy follows that up with City had a better run of games in the end. Well, 21 unbeaten, isn't it? I mean, when Real Madrid can't beat them and they've got all the players in the world. Yeah, I don't think it's anything to do with the run of games. I think they're just... Man City with the T1000 up top. To well, are, we gonna, are we up to the start of the second half then? Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, I said at half time that we're really missing Zinni. Gabriel Jesus needs to, get, needs to get more involved. We spoke about that already. Um, Brighton goal, 50th minute. Uh, White beating Matoma. We saw that all evening. Um, the moment that Matoma went from the right hand side to the left hand side, Ben White just had it, just it kind of just lost we lost ourselves we really really did est uh est what's his name again um est to pinyan est to pinyan that's the one um just bombs past saka saka doesn't track his runner the overlap happens the ball is played in teeny puts it back out est uh, est to pinyan puts the ball back in and then there's a incend uh, incenzio or whatever his name is um just basically with the easiest header of his entire career and puts it past a, a very 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 flappy ramsdale very, very flappy Ramsdale. Yeah, um, and, but Kivior, on it. did you notice as well that Kivior was already down? Um, that was the guy that was marking and Sensio was Kivior and he was down on the floor um, injured. Yeah, well, my notes say, I'm just going to get rid of that from Wally. Um, 50th minute, Matoma gets past Ben yet again. He then backs off and he crosses it high. KT clears it short. I don't know why he didn't try and fucking... He just went, let me give more. it back to you, mate. Yeah. And then they spank it across the, the across, and then CCO low headers it. As Kivior is down on one knee after Ferguson scraped down the back of his heel and took his shoe off, and then rather than getting back up, he decided to stay kneeling down. Didn't wasn't even appealing for a foul or any of anything like that. It wasn't going, oh my foot rolling around like most of the Brighton players spent the entire game doing. And then as CCO was stood behind, he went, oh, I don't mind if I do, sir. Thank you, and then nodded it in. Um, Dan, and no Danny, one cleared it properly. Just, just Danny, a car crash. Yeah. There's, there's, uh, there's a massive uh, misinterpretation when it comes to the world and the people that don't watch football uh. and the people that watch football. The people that don't watch football believe to footballers to be those guys that roll around and they're like, oh my God. You've... And they, a lot of them do do that. Um, but when you watch football and you understand and you break down football and you understand it, if you are too honest and you don't make the meal out of a situation, you can you can sometimes 
not have the favor being called in your way because of honesty. We see it all the time, all the time. If Kivior goes down acting like he got shot, yeah, and f- and flailing the referee, about the and fucking riling around, screaming his ass off, there is a possibility of advantage being played on our side because of a foul potentially on Kivior with the uh, with the Ferguson down the leg, and especially because, his, his boot was off because he was honest and he wants the referee to make the decision uh, objectively and unbiasedly. He does the honest thing and drops down and just puts himself out of the game, right? Can, but the referee doesn't make any note of this because he's like, ah, he's all right. He's just having a nap. He's having a little kit, mate. He's having a 40 winks. He's all right. I think Don't worry about it. Com- the commentator said, oh, I think he's doing up his shoelaces. Yeah, no, yeah he's fine, mate. Don't worry about up. him. He's <laughs> in the middle of a corner. There's never a bad time. There's never <laughs> a bad time to do up your shoelaces. Yeah. And keep your foot right. This is it. And as I said, don't get me wrong. I don't can't stand it when you see the players rolling around and making a massive meal out of it. But in certain situations, in certain times, it's called for and it's needed because the referees just don't fucking get it. And this is a per- prime example, prime example of why sometimes those things need to happen. Loki put Brighton looked like extras on Saving Private Ryan, um, an amazing film, one of the best. Yes, uh, Wally has put, uh, yeah, this is true. There is VAR, and it's for this reason. So the players don't have to buy any flat fouls. And Spin says, let's, let's not talk about these refs today, Ugh. Yeah, let's not talk but, about it anymore. But uh, Brighton just did it the entire game, and it is seen as an art in South American football. It is an art to be able to con the referee to roll around. That's why they all do it. They do it all the bloody time. And Brighton have got quite a few South American players. And that was the plan. The manager, he loves a bit of that. I don't know where. Um, is, he, is he Italian, the, the manager? Yeah, he is. He used to be manager yep. of my Palermo. Yep. And so then they made the most of it. And they were doing it all. Even when three in the lap, they were still doing it. That was their game plan. They stuck to their game plan for 98 plus six. 104 minutes of football was... was on the clock today, not necessarily played. Um, yes, so uh, the, uh, all I've put after that is 55th minute. More fouling from Brighton, got a yellow. 59th minute, Nelson and Party came on. But Xhaka looked I, I, absolutely I, ruined, didn't he? Um, yeah, I've got Ben White getting destroyed again. Uh, subs, <laughs> Party, Nelson for Xhaka and Jorginho. Welbeck returning for Brighton, still no ESR. Obviously, we see him later on. Um, one of the worst games of the season for me. 62 minutes, Saka making something happen. Nelson misses with the wrong part of his boot. He kind of, if he hits it with the inside, who knows? Who knows? Uh, 63rd minute, Arteta yellow card. Losing yeah, it. I, Losing I put it. before that, 62nd minute, 40% possession and one shot on target out of 10. Then just after Arteta got booked, it dropped down to 33% possession. And then you think, this, is, this isn't our day. <laughs> no, no, no. We lost it. We lost it. Um, I thought we lost it from the moment we kicked the ball. I thought we lost it from the moment we kicked the ball in the first half. I think we've just, I think we're gone. I think we're on the beach, Danny. We I think had, we're on the beach. Had absolutely nothing to offer. But if you're new, if you're just joining the show, then we said they've had a great season. They were all physically and mentally knackered. Some of those players, normally in the run up to the end of the season, were, big, were showing signs of being tired and they'd get a rest. Tommy Ashley would come on and play a couple of games and Ben White would get a rest. Ben's not had a rest. Gabriel's not had a rest. The only reason uh, Zinchenko isn't playing is because he's injured. Xhaka has played nearly every minute of every game all season long. Erdegaard is one of the few players in that team that was regularly getting subbed off, and that was mainly the first part of the season. And these players, they've they have done so well. But it's so uh, but there's no no there's no excuse for today. Today was absolutely dog shit. It's just clown defending. And it's embarrassing. The I mean, they'll come to that third goal later on, but and then he brings on party and uh Party was rubbish. Party goes down holding his face like his man uh, lets his man run away. That sums up Party's okay. last six weeks. I've put first of all, if your man hits you, you don't just go down and and, and, yeah, sta- was... and stay there. He didn't want to be on the pitch. It was, it was that guy like, Welbs, isn't it? It was that guy Welbs. It was, it was Welbeck that he had a little bit like, of a puff with. It's almost like watching um, Urzel in, in his last few games for Arsenal. Didn't want to get involved. Party doing that. I said this uh, about a month ago. Party's done. I don't want him at the club. He, he has had he has been his best player for Arsenal and he's been almost world class at times this season for us. But then after the World Cup, 
maybe maybe after about February, that's when things start to go downhill for him. And it's, I don't know if it's been he's been told he's not staying at the club next season. I don't know if those kind of just, um, those kind of um, conversations go those, on. At what that point would be they go on. that would be that would be a massive massive pile of negligence yeah. if that's the case. Yeah, you would um, that just like just like David Ornstein, who released information about Zinchenko being injured without Arsenal's permission. Um, to give basically everybody uh, and Brighton one of those teams to go, oh, we won't have to worry about and factor in Zinchenko then. Yes, maybe even Partey's decided he wants to leave. He's been at the club for, what, two and a half, three and a half seasons? Maybe he's decided he's that's it. From go. day one. He's been scuppered from day one, Partey's uh, career at Arsenal. He's just had a plethora of injuries that he never had at Atleti. And it's just never really got going for him. It's never really, you know, a, a fresh start and a clean break might be what, both parties need my, my pun uh, and uh, another thing I noticed Brighton played the entire game like they were 1-0 down yes. round of applause for Brighton yeah they like I, we... listen, listen they played tack dirty sometimes but they played some fucking beautiful football holy shit Wally they were fantastic point. Wally says is that you Walrus let me know uh, Wally says Party has been off since the international break when we needed to send a trainer with him. Plus, he's also got certain quote marks issues, stuff going on. Stuff other going stuff on. going on. And we send time with him when he goes on international duty. Maybe he's got the hump because he has been most of the season. You'd give him about an average of about eight, eight and a half for a lot of the season, maybe even nines at times. And after the international break, which is what February, March, something like that, he, he's not had one decent game. He's had a few decent touches, but today. He come on like he's with a, with a, like a dog with a shitty ass. I don't know even how that makes sense. You know, we'll be down to um. I'm, I'm down to I've six. got seventieth minute here, but if you've got, got something then. earlier, no, I just said uh, Matoma does Ben again and sixty six Brighton playing like they were the ones losing one nil. Yeah, yeah so seventieth yeah. minute. What you got? Seventieth minute, Erdegaard to Trossard. <laughs> uh, for, sorry, sorry, Erdegaard um, to Trossard, and then Trossard. Just does nothing with it. Um, 76th minute ESR and Eddie for Erdegaard and Gabriel Ooh, Jesus. The thing is, for the moment, as Eddie and Ketia, I know he had that chance very late on uh, where he should have done something and then he tried to look for a penalty. Yeah, Emil Smith Rowe, he just, he looks like he's just, he's completely dejected from the, the of understanding of how we play football now. I've, I've never seen such a decline on a player. Like yeah, Emma Smith Rowe. I know that we've seen Jacker this season, who's been my player of the season so far. Um, uh, you know, his 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 rise again, his rising from the dead has been breathtaking, but nobody's really talking about the crash and burn of Emil Smith Rowe. The guy is just signing the contract, getting the number 10 shirt, doing what he did, coming on, getting double figure goals um from very small appearances, having that injury and then the surgery, and then just what mm. Don't I? Yeah, that is a whole podcast and so on. You did miss one bit, 72nd minute. Mm. Um, great zigzagging run from Jesus, run down the right hand side, zigzagging for all the players, and then um then I can't remember what happened. I'm mixing that up one one with no that the one before that was the Trossard one, like you said. No, yeah, there was another one. Zigzag run from Jesus, but I yep. do remember one from Trossard and Jay. Oh, maybe it was Trossard was running was Trossard. into space. It was Trossard, yeah, Trossard Erdegaard, was 70th minute. It was 70. Well, the one I've got here, 70th minute, Erdegaard plays it through to Trossard, who, who does fantastically well, but it's just, it's crap. Now, the one I was thinking of, uh, I think it was uh, Jace just running on the right hand side, and then Trossard was waiting in space, and then um, Jace just couldn't get the ball away. Rudy with a quote, well, Beck. Oh, uh, the shot from, uh, from, from a really tight angle. No, there, was, there was no shot. No, the players, oh. he got past about four players and then oh, okay. three of them crowded him in the penalty area and then uh, Trossard was waiting in the middle by the penalty spot trying to wed it to put it in. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, couldn't, um, Jace just couldn't get the ball to him. I thought that was a really decent bit of play. Uh, I've got a quote from Rudy for Danny Welbeck, Arsenal legend. Jeez. It is one. It is a tough one for Arsenal to take. I have a great affiliation with the club. I love my time here and everyone's always given me good reception when I come back. Decent pro. Yeah. He's done brilliantly at Brighton. He's done really well. Even this season, he's been fantastic when he plays. Yeah. When he plays minutes, he's very good. I mean, he left Arsenal on a free, went to Watford. Watford got relegated. And he probably was looking at his career then and going, God, I don't want to drop down in the championship. Then. Yeah, um, but he's Potter doing it. And rescued him. He's doing it. 
Fair play to Welbeck. Got no qualms with Welbeck. I like Danny Welbeck. I'll yeah. never forget the goal he scored in the FA Cup against United and celebrated like a champion against his yeah. former club. That was fucking beautiful. They never celebrate. And Danny Welbeck's fucking... Yes! I love, I'll never forget that. Beautiful moment of football, that. Beautiful moment of football. But it was a bit of an odd decision taking Erdegaard off, but... I suppose yeah. the game was almost gone by. But we, we it was were gone. I, I think it's gone. It's gone by then. 2-0 two, uh, two down by then, two we? nil. we're two 0 Yeah, we're not getting back in the game. 70th minute, 80th minute. Um, at that point, I really thought we were desperate. Um, Brighton carry on doing their thing. Uh, once again, Insegno getting injured and walking across the entirety of the pitch, not being asked walking around. Moonwalking, sure, sure, sure. <sighs> 86th minute, we're done. Um, we're playing out from the back. The ball is caught in our possession and then... In, um, Undef. How have you, how have you written this down? And I'll tell you how I've written this goal down. Uh, I just put, we are outdone at the back. Everyone was poor, season done. That's all I wrote. I didn't even write anything down about it. I put 85th minute fucking around between our defence. It all started when they kicked the ball away rather than we had a, we'd been given a free kick. And uh, so rather than that, they kicked the ball away. And then rather than one of our defenders coming and getting the ball and then restarting play, Ramsdale ran out of goal to get the ball. And then he kicked it out. And then I think it went out to Trossard, who missed it. And then it bounced off and went to one of the Brighton players. Then Brighton get it. And they end up lobbing Ramsdale from the left-hand side. And everybody just stood still and went, huh? So when you when you when if anybody gets to watch that game, I doubt it's match of the day will show this because they're arseholes. But it all started from them kicking the ball away. And they should have got player books for that. And then Ramsdale should have stayed, should, should have just left it. Should because uh, Ben White should have gone and got that because it went roughly his position, but they didn't. Let's be, let's be honest, Danny. Weird. If it wasn't 3 0, it would have been 2 0. Well, <laughs> we ain't getting back in this. We're done, mate. We're done. We're on the beach. Erdegaard sipping pina coladas in the pouring rain. It's beautiful stuff, mate. Beautiful stuff. Got a quote from Erdegaard from Rudy. Cheers, Rudy. Erdegaard, yeah, it feels like that whatever the title is over, it is going to be very difficult now. We have to be honest. It is tough to take. It is not a good feeling at the moment. The way we played, particularly in the second half, I don't know what happened, to be honest. It feels like there is no hope now. In the first half, we did a lot of good things and had moments to create big chances, but we gave them more and more momentum in the second half. And this is another power. We wanted to come here and continue like we had in the last two games, get a good result and keep pushing. It's a big disappointment. This is honest. Oh. Rubbish. Absolute and utter rubbish. Um, yeah, he's right. Um, but it's just boring. It was like it's all this season, there's not really been a moment where I've not watched the entirety of the match. Um, after they scored their second goal, I didn't want to watch any more of the match. If this was last season and I wasn't doing a podcast, I would have turned the telly off and just done something else. Hmm. I thought we were just exhausted, gone. Lost. I was, I was, um, oh, I'll show you what I was doing during the game. Oh, yeah, uh, shopping. No, I wasn't doing any shopping actually. I do need to because I've on, I'm on the fruit thing at the moment. Uh, no carbs, just fruit. So How's I'm it going? Done. Uh, I've got the rumbly tummy. I was doing this. I've got top trumps. Um, oh, yeah, you said. You said, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And super trains. And I was going through them, putting them in the right order. Helicopters and motocross. I've got about 150 packs of top trumps. That I've been collecting one of them. I still had the thing on it, the sticker on it, and it was um, from Sports and Fashions in Huntingdon. I must have bought that in about 1981. 99p. I don't even think it was 99p. No, it was a lot less than that. I would oh. go and find it, but I can't remember how much it was. But yeah. Um, boy says, we we upgrade on party and jacket and we are cooking with all the gas and some Wagyu. Oh, I love Wagyu. Wagyu. Never had any. I refuse to pay that amount of money. Uh, Jackasaurus on Twitch says, I'm still dis bitterly disappointed. Loki says, Loki says, thumbs up, people. How many thumbs up have we got? We've only got 10. 12. Oh, um, I, I nearly got it. To I be fair, 10. people are just clicking on, you know, just trying to make sense of their life and then moving on. <laughs> got a quote from Arteta from Rudy. Uh, we Quote, we knew the challenge we had today. It was very different to the one we had at Newcastle. I was stood there and very proud of what we did last week. 
But today we have to apologize to our people. We have to move on very quickly and not keep that feeling for a long time. Well, we've only got two more um, two more games to go, haven't we? Yes, um, I get what he's trying to say. He's trying to get rid of that mentality so we don't go into it and we don't hold it on till next season. Um, let's hope that we finish the season strong. Um, we beat Nottingham Forest and we beat Wolves um, at home, which is going to be a nice um, way to end the season. Uh, a, a big home win against Wolves. Um, so that will be that will be good. So we then we don't, as I said, we don't hold it and carry it on for next season. We don't want to. We don't want any of that jet lag joining us for the title push that we're going to inevitably push for next season. Well, there's no European Championships, there's no World Cups, there's none of that other nonsense. Most of our players have a few pointless internationals, but... It's just you transfer, agree? transfer, transfer deadlines. Would you say yeah. to Saka and Udegaard and, and a few others and Gabriel, go on, off you go, season's done for you, or would you make them play the last two games of the season? I know no, we're a football think... manager, that's what we do. When the season's over, you've got games to go, you give the 15, 16, 17-year-olds a go, so then hopefully in See, seasons I don't to come... That. No? I don't even do that. No, no, no. I don't even. If there's, if I've, if I've, if there's nothing to play for in the like final two or three games of the season, yeah, I just give it to my assistant. <laughs> I just go, you do it, mate. You do whatever oh. you want. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I've never done that in a game. Oh, I have. Yeah. If there's, if there's nothing to play for, I don't give a shit. Oh no! I want to get all the youth players because then I can look back in years to come and go. I give you your debut at, at the age of fifteen against West Ham in, in in the last game of the season. Now look at you—you've won ten Ballon d'Ors in a row. I say that I don't ever manage Premier League teams because it doesn't interest me. There's no there's no fun in that. Uh, I always did, I tell, I'm, did I say that I'm managing Almera from the uh, Spain from La Liga? I'm pretty sure I told that told you that already. Yeah, mm, they're a, a club possibly. that were created in 1989. Uh, so they're quite a new club on the southern tip of Spain, yeah, Almera. Yeah. Um, but they've got like a a really rich owner. I went from Sparta Praha, won the league. Borussia Mönchengladbach came in for me. I saved them from a relegation. Went into the second season, ended up leaving halfway because uh, the the board wasn't backing any of my decisions, even though I saved the club. And then Almera came um, were available, so I jumped in and hopefully the sugar daddy put some money into the club and he's done nothing so far. Nothing. Nothing. Sai sums it up perfectly, the, and he hasn't ended this with hashtag anything, which is a bit of a move. He's already done his, his obligatory hashtag Arteta out. Sai says, you are up against it when you are fighting against corrupt teams and corrupt referees. Sai, never message us again. End it on a high. That is wonderful and very, very true. Womble says, it's the Champions League, feels like a trophy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, another quote from Arteta. Um Quote, it is difficult to see the picture, season to be proud of today. When the teams show the face in the second half of it, it shows we have things to adjust. Uh, Any time in this league can punish you, and that would happen in the Champions League too. What's, what does that mean? That means uh, basically some of you lot are uh, goodbye. Yeah, I, I, yeah, we need to be, we need to be brutal this summer with, uh, with outs. Uh, I'm not talking about who we sign. I'm talking about who we get rid of. We're a step above, um, um, what, if, what, 25% of our of our squad now? Maybe even more. Maybe 35% of our squad. We're we're better than we're better than, and we need to we need to step up and 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 sign replacements for. Um, so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we will do. Uh, Brady's banana says he goes on holiday to Almira. Like very it. nice. I've been. To, I like Malaga. That not the party bit of it, but Malaga's really nice. Um, like Malaga. Should we fast forward? This is the ninety fifth minute. Then. Yeah, I've got nothing else. I got nothing. I got no other uh, notes. I stopped watching after the ninety fifth minute. <laughs> I stopped after the goal. Sorry, the third goal. I stopped watching. Um, stopped Brighton watching. have a shot. Ramsdale parries it. They follow up and score. Good night. There you go. That's it. Season done. But if we're honest, season was done after Man City beat us four one. That wasn't it. Yes, it was. That yes, was, it was. It, it. We, we had a, we kind of like, you know, when uh, you are a, if you're like a, you're like a, a, um, a farmer and you have to put down a chicken or something like that, you know, you cut the chicken's head off or whatever and the chicken's still running around. Yeah. That's what Arsenal's last two <laughs> games were before this. They were kind of like uh, just just last body responses in the, in the body that's just dead. A few, a few <laughs> violent twitches. <laughs> no one knows what's going on. About. We've got a couple of good results, and, we're, and then but then we died. 
It's all gone black. Nobody knows why. No one can it's see. Like a anything. cockroach. Cockroach doesn't. If you cut the head off a cockroach, yeah. it doesn't die because you beheaded it. It dies because it can't eat and dies of starvation. Fuck that's me. that's. There you go. What a way. So what a way where we are right now. You got to try and laugh at these moments, Danny. We get. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ. We're all sitting here. You know, just wanted. To, oh, it's, it, it's been a really frustrating game to watch. But yes. you know, you got to try and laugh about it. Got to try and laugh about it. Rudy says, a uh, quote from Arteta today was a critical moment. Uh, was a critical moment to have hope for that dream. When you play in these moments, you can't do what we did in the second half. Very mm -hmm. true. Arteta also said, a different feeling to the one we had last Sunday, and we felt proud, and we did what it takes to win. We have to apologise to our people. I think I've already read that bit. I'd scroll up and I scrolled down again. You just Boy, said it twice. science. He oh. just said it twice. Uh, Arteta just uh, wanted to repeat him. Uh, no, I am sorry to my people. <laughs> uh, so I is sad about the cockroaches. Um, yeah. So I also said, how was ESR? I couldn't, I couldn't want it the last 15 minutes. It couldn't watch the last 15 minutes. Just couldn't take it. You missed it absolutely in. nothing. I spoke about it. Um, I said that ESR, he just looks like a guy that hasn't played for this football club for years. He looks completely lost. He looks like... Um, you know, when you go to a park and, uh, you, uh, you're, you know, you're playing with your mates and then your little brother turns up and your mum goes, mate, let your little brother play. <laughs> okay, mum. So you let your little brother play and he's just fucking running around, you know, participating. That's what it is. That's what it is. I look oh, like bless him. It, it broke my heart. It just, yeah, he looks like he just. It looks like you're just getting a participation medal. It's crazy. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, Jack has always just put in Tottenham a dumpster fire, who's legendary in quote marks manager, will be managing Chelsea next season. Uh, Europe, Europe, Europe won't, would do nothing for them anyway, but they are knackered. Huge wage bill, a huge stadium to pay for that costs twice as much as the Emirates and no European football to pay for it. So there will be a fire sale. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, we've got a new one here. Um, K-W-E-S Questone, was that meant to say? Um, need to work really hard in the off-season to add quality to the squad. Need a proper striker. Yeah, we've been saying that. And Rudy says, Zebri pretty much saying they will lose McAllister and Caicedo. Caicedo. Oh, really? Did he say that post, Rudy? Did he say that post that he's McAllister's oh, he probably going to go to Liverpool and Caicedo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if he could come on and play, then it would, if they wouldn't have been any worse off. True, true. McAllister will probably go to Liverpool um, and Caicedo will hopefully come to us. Um, I know that a lot of people want Rice um, over Caicedo, but I say, let's have both. <laughs> um, Jack says sign Ferguson oh, I really Fran. like him really like Ferguson he's only, he's only 12 Fran is here yes. from Golazzo yes, very, very good YouTube channel hello Fran I messaged you to see if you want to do a preview yesterday but as usual uh, I messaged you and I messaged um, our Stan was busy I messaged uh, Walrus no not Walrus um, Waffle Worcester Waffles and he got back to me really late and you got back to me today so bit late so check your messages uh i'm not biased harland regen true is he that'd be nice he looks very good he looks very very good did you not see that a uh, chance that he got he, he basically created him from uh, himself off gabrielle did you not see that he basically just held gabrielle back i think i did just went... they were shooting right weren't they yeah 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 no what oh, was it left no it was left yeah it was in the first half Oh, it was in no, the first half. It was shooting left. Yeah, um, he held off Gabriel. Gabriel basically had his entirety of his left arm in control, but Ferguson still managed to get a shot off. It wasn't on target, but it, uh, he's eighteen and he's got the strength of oh my days. Because they had the man. other young, the other young striker, didn't they? He came in a couple of seasons ago and, and he scored a few goals, but I think they've shipped him out on loan. Do you remember him? I can't remember. Yeah, he I was. Uh, I think he might have had, as usual, might have had a decent game against us. I'm gonna go and find out what his name was. Yeah, no worries, no a, worries. Um, yeah, but Ferguson found. looks uh, Ferguson looks really, really, really good. I'm not interested on in signing McAllister. Um, I think no. we've got a plethora of attacking players. I think McAllister plays better in an attacking role than he does in a defensive role. Like he's uh, like he plays for City, um, for Brighton at the moment. I think they I think they lack 
but obviously they've got the quality to be able to to have him in the in that position so it's not a problem really at the end of the day. it was aaron Connolly, another irishman no never no, heard of him ring doesn't ring a bell well he's only 23 from galway he made his debut and uh yeah 1920 and 2021 he played quite a few games and scored five goals but he, he looked decent but now he's he's now kicking his heels in the championship on loan at hull he was at venezia venezia in uh, serie b mm, there you go so yeah they've got a decent pipeline of players all right what do we do now then uh nothing we don't do anything we just uh we just move forward we just move forward we go and enjoy uh we go and enjoy the summer. Um, we've got a couple of games. The last game of the season is Wolves at home, which is which is nice. Um, but okay, well, uh, Forest yes. is going to be a goal fest. That is going to be yes. mad. Yeah, Forest are really. Sh- to be fair, they've been getting a couple of results, but they've been uh, they've been doing an Arsenal where they get themselves in front and then chuck away leads. So I don't know. yeah, I, I, I saw their game against Leeds, and it was uh, was it Leeds. No Southampton because I remember Maitland Niles playing at left back and having an absolute goddamn mare. It was like it was a, he would in fact Maitland Niles' performance very much summed up today's performance, badly. Pretty much, pretty much. Uh yeah, we uh we struggled and uh and uh yeah. Ainsley Maitland Niles. What's gonna happen to him? What do you think? A free transfer. If I was him, I'd go and play abroad. You're only going to get a couple of chances. Fresh start. Like to go and play abroad. Yeah. I mean, yeah, other, fresh other than that, lower half Premier League team and then just drudge, drudge out the rest of his career. Um, Walcott will be in the Championship next season unless he retires. Ward Prowse in the Championship. That'd be sad to see. But, yeah, it's not very often you see ex-Arsenal players getting relegated and there's two today. Um, yesterday, Maitland-Niles and uh, Walcott's when uh, Maitland-Niles comes back to Arsenal, he's, he's leaving on a free. We've got a lot of players going out in the summer. A lot of players. A lot, a lot of players going out in the summer. So we'll see who we get, I guess. We'll see who we get. I'm sure we'll do some podcasts throughout the summer. Um, it would yeah. be really cool to talk about Arsenal without any World Cup, European football, or other malarkey going on. It's just going to be a transfer window, a, a proper old school transfer window. It's going to be nice. Uh- I think uh, you're you're going to be doing some shows. Stan will be most of ABW said, "Oh yeah, I'm up for some um, some summer shows." I think we're going to try and do one, maybe twenty minute, half hour show every time a player comes and goes, unless That'd it's someone nice. uh, someone who's rubbish. But it'd just be nice to uh to to pump out some content that is easy to do because God knows yeah. I've got nothing else to do in my life now. Um, Sean's decided to leave the country for most of the summer up until September. And uh, all my friends have, oh, that sexy Frank bought a Lambretta last night. He was laying in bed at half past night, half past nine, and went, I found a Lambretta on, on eBay. And he drove up to Doncaster to pick it up. Why not? Fair enough. Fair enough. He's having a midlife not? crisis. He's now got a B, an old B Reg Beetle and an old A Reg Lambretta. Three and a half grand, I think he paid for it. Oh, nice. He was going to bring it around for me to see. Not that I care about bikes, but nor does he, but it's just uh, good. Should we do some some questions? Yeah, if you've got any questions, guys, put them in the chat. You know how it works. Uh, we're just fed up with talking about that game. If I want to say, if there is questions that can maybe uh, deter away from the uh, from this particular game, that'd be great. Let's talk about positives. Boy10 said, should Arteta not consider swapping Martinelli and Jesus when Jesus is not on it at all? There's been quite a lot of talk and about... I've been sitting quite a lot of time. I can see Martinelli as being the next kind of Ronaldo figure where he can play absolutely anywhere. But is up front a good position for Martinelli as, as a lone striker? But he'd... I I still haven't seen him do it. He's been he's had opportunities to do it, and I've still not seen him do it, do it. Do you know what I mean? Do it. Like, proper. So, I don't know, maybe he needs another season of, an, uh, and then maybe he steps into the shoes. I, I don't know yet. I don't know. I'd love to, I'd love to say yes, but I've not seen enough for him to prove me, uh, to prove me wrong. I've been disappointed with Jesus far too much this season, and he Agreed. is not someone who is going to score you the goals needed. Striker. He's a great player, but again, you see most of today it was Erdegaard was ahead of him, and he'd yep. be dropping deep. I don't want to see that. Great player, but needs to be more. Well, that's what that's his that's his game. That's how he plays. He's a yeah. he's a uh, he's a pressing like false nine. You know what I mean? That's how he plays. Um, we need a striker. I've been saying it all season. People are saying that they'd like to sign a, a centre mid um, as opposed to a striker. I say one outside both. We need a striker. We need a striker. We need a striker. 
Boy also asks, why is Arteta still playing Nelson when he's already decided that he won't be signing a new deal at Arsenal and will be leaving on a free? Because yeah. you sometimes have to put emotions aside and hope that he comes up with another piece of magic. Yes, and also he came on, he looked pretty good. If we, had another op- if we had another option, if, we're, if he had faith in Fabio Vieira, for example, then you would see him coming on and not Nelson, um, especially if he didn't do that Bournemouth thing. So it is what it is. You just kind of have to hope and pray, but it didn't work out. I've got a really good site that I love, um, better than um, uh, Soccer Way and who scored. It's called um, SofaScore.com. Go and have a look at it, people. Really, really good. I like the way they work. And just looking at today's game, um, see what ratings they give people. Ooh. Um, can I? Can I kind of? Can, can we try? Can I try and predict who got the best go and who got the worst scores? Rams. Um, Actually, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get who scored dot com open as well and get that and then see what what they what numbers they give people as well. So go on, to, um, Ramsdale. Okay. Oh, okay. Shall I go for it? All right, all right. Uh, six point. Well. I, I'll do, instead of I won't do points, I'll just do a, a straight number five. Yeah. I'll give him a five. Um, six point two and a six. Left back tyranny. Uh, five. Uh, a five nine and a six four. Gabriel centre back. Gabriel five. A six two and a five eight. Bloody hell. Um, Kivior five. A six one and a five nine. I'm pretty uh, nailing this so far, Danny. I'm pretty well. Benny Blanco, uh, four, a six four and a five nine. Oh, okay. I should have said um, five. Jacka, uh, five, a six nine and a six two. Jorginho, five, <laughs> six one and a six six. Okay. Uh, Odegaard, six, a six one and a six seven. Bit higher there from Sofa Score. Martinelli. Six. A six one and a six seven. Hey Hoos. Four. Six nine six five. Uh Saka. Five. A seven and a seven three. And I suppose we, we can add who else? Who came on early? Trossard, because he played most of the game. Two. We give him. Two. <laughs> A five point five and a six point three. So uh, really nice. These are very polite scores. <laughs> um, let's go and see because I couldn't look at the chat then. Uh, Bailey's banana says Martin Ellie, just get your chin up. At times he could be magic. He could. He do. he's got a real habit of he does it all the time where he just runs and his head down all the time. That's how uh, he plays. I don't know how they're going to get that out of him. Brady's banana. I don't know. Travis Orr says, Jesus is the Brazilian Lacazette. Well, no, Lacazette has scored... About yeah, Lacazette's goals. got 20-plus goals this season. Yeah, he scored four in the last game. Rudy <laughs> says, squad rotation, cost us maybe. We ran out of steam. Saka played all the games and looked fatigued recently. Not to blame him, though. Party also looked not fit. Could give you more examples. True. Um, Felix? No. Uh, Brady's banana, a team of fives today, really. Yeah, their average rating of the whole team was 6.06, probably the worst for the season, but they have uh, they have been really busy. Uh, boy 10, the site gave Saka a seven, it was, yeah, that's just he did ridiculous. a few things today. Yeah, uh, he had one, a couple of moments, he had that shot where he, he just went wide and stuff like that, and then he had that opportunity where he wasn't able to keep the ball in play and he hit the cross and he hit the post and stuff with his shot. Has a couple of moments, but nothing really that's going to tell me that he's a seven. Nothing. Womble says, uh, well, not really an ABW poker tournament with Magic Mike and others taking Arsenal and crap could make a good show for the summer. I can't play poker. I played it once in my life and I shit it. I love I poker. Love poker. Hmm. Uh, Right, uh, we've got another question here from And Lots of Numbers. Is anyone concerned with Ramsdale's recent performances? There appears to be a clear decline despite a few outstanding saves compared to the start middle of the season. He's not had a rest, has he? I mean, a goalkeeper's life is easier than most, but he's still... Was he 24? 25? 20, 20, 25 today, Aaron Ramsdale. He's 25 today, Oops, so happy birthday, yes. Ramsdale. I hope you enjoyed your, your birthday. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to enjoy his birthday. The guy's fucking stinky rich. He'd be fine. He's going to have a great time. Um, yes. But, uh, you know, 
he's been he's been a guy that's kept us in games um throughout this season his saves have been absolutely phenomenal uh this season now there's party that's that's his best moment of the game that, that um, look, uh, Ramsdale with his hands on his hips, Gabriel with his arms out wide, and party covering his face up. That sums it up today. So if you could sum up today's performance in a photo, that's it. Isn't it? Yeah, it's a really cool thing from everybody involved. Um, but yeah, no, Ramsdale, I don't think uh, I don't think we're seeing uh, any, any major issues. I think we're just seeing a team that are a little bit dejected, um, very tired, burnt out, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on the team. You know, we've overperformed this season. And we've done fantastically well. We're just starting to see some cracks. All it, all we need to do now is, uh, you know, um, not paper up the cracks, but work on not getting those cracks as early or at all. Um, and and that's what's going to happen next season and the season afterwards. Let's see what's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. But I'm not worried about Ramsdale, Danny. Are you worried about Ramsdale? I'm not worried about Ramsdale. I, no, you watch Seaman or Layman or or Bob Wilson Jesus. or John yeah. Lucas at that age. Was it David Not Seaman one. who was in goal for 98 when that Ronaldinho free kick went over his head from like 40, 50 yards? Oh, in the World Cup. Yeah, we did yeah, that in the World Cup. in his career, didn't he? Did there it against Saragossa and then he also did it again in the World Cup. So, you know, that's, that was David Seaman, mate. Um, Travis Saw says, I should have expected when Lacquer was at Arsenal, he didn't score a lot, but his link-up play was good. Something Jace said was good same thing with jesus he can link up well but he's just not scoring the goals he's not that but that's not what he does that's not what he does that's like um why we're interested in mason mount play people are interested in signing mason mount not because of what he can do on the ball but what he can do off the ball he's one of the best pressing central midfielders attacking midfielders in the world um statistically um they did a really good video on tifo so obviously people know tifo go and check them out um, but they did a really good breakdown of why everybody likes Mason Mount, and it's a really good video. And really makes you understand why a lot of teams fancy him, and Arteta really wants him um, because he can offer that art, you know, that Jacker left eight role where he can play very good. He's like your secondary outlet of creative. You don't want someone that can compete with Erdegaard. You want someone who can kind of deputize when needed. But his strength is off the ball, and you know, as I say, the 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 quicker you win the ball back is the quicker you can go on and score and make something happen. So that's the reason why. And that's um, and that's the reason why sometimes you sign players like Gabriel Jesus, who's not an out-and-out goal scorer. He's somebody that can offer something a little bit different and it creates an outlet for everybody else. And that's the reason why you're seeing goals scored from Martinelli, Saka and Erdegaard in, in such, uh, such a large amount on all fronts. Um, you know, that's because of the gap, a lot of the time anyway, especially at the start of the season, we saw that Gabriel Jesus effect where he has that ability of linking up the play and he's done it beautifully this season. And I know he's not finishing the season very strong, but you've got to remember he had a, a, a quite a deflating World Cup. He's come back for, with an injury. He's he kind of, he did get rushed back as much as people might not say he did. He must have done because he hasn't been the same really throughout this season. The, the Gabriel Jesus we got pre-World Cup to the Gabriel Jesus that we got post-World Cup is different kettle of fish. It, it, do, you know what, do you know what annoys me, Danny? Is, do you think, this is a, uh, this is a question, do you think the season would have been different, negatively or positively, if there was no World Cup and it was a standard season for Arsenal? I think it's messed it up for everybody. Yes. Yeah, but I'd, I'm not sure how affected we were, but no, it's not been easy. No. <clears throat> and hopefully it will never happen again. But I think if it's affected every, any, anybody, but the players, that had, teams that had players that went away from World Cup, we didn't really have that many that played regularly in the World Cup, did we, apart from maybe Saka? And that's it. Right, we've got three more quick questions, and then we're going to go. Barry Doug, Barry Douglas, Douglas. Hold on, what does it say? That's an A. Barry Douglas is Martinelli another Walcott cheeky? No, he's not. And uh, Womble says, "Can we clone Martinelli?" I think nice. that'd be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. And boy, ten ends it with. Are we still interested in Tielemans on a free? I'm personally not, but I wonder what the spread is. Uh, no. no, I'm not interested. He's shown nothing. He's no. shown absolutely. He's had moments in the past, but he's shown nothing this season. Nothing. Yes. Yeah, so I think that Martin it, put then. in the chat. Sorry, I'm going to jump on that Martin comment. Stop defending Saka from criticism. He's been shit for months. I've said this. I've not hid away from this. I don't give a crap about all that stuff. I'm, you know me, Danny. I'm honest and open, and I don't give a fuck who I offend when it comes to my yeah, opinion. It's, it's been I think since the I think Cup. Saka's been crap. He's been sack. Yeah, Saka's been crap since he got rested for that Leeds game. I moaned about it back then, and I'll moan about it today. Saka's been crap since Arteta rested him. 
when he played those 52, 51 or 52 games on a bounce, he was fucking phenomenal. Since we rested him, we took him out of his pace and out of his groove, and he's been shit ever since. I've got no defending Saka. Don't care. So I wouldn't agree that he's been shit. He hasn't been the Saka of eight, and he has little flashes of it, but everyone, yeah, everyone but knows no, his but game. overall, he's... the right, yeah. cutting on the right, then on the left, and then cross it. And the people know his game. He's going he's gonna to have to find new tricks to evolve, but he's 21. He's... And that player is better 100%. than 90% of the players in the Premier League. 100%. I'm not Completely worried agree. at all. No, no, I'm not worried at all either. No. But, you know, I I think, you know what, there's different players who play different ways and they react differently to certain situations. You'll see situations like Xhaka where he's getting told by Arteta, you either step up and play that left eight attacking role or we'll get someone in to do the job for you. So he steps up and does the business. There are some players that like rest and need rest, but for some reason Saka doesn't. The moment you rest the guy, fucking turns to shit. So... I, I I think you have to really... Man management's a very big, important part of the game. Personnel like Ateta need to learn man management. He's, he's had glimpses in the past of poor man management. Um, he's gotten better this season. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying, you know, his shit don't stink, but I'm saying that sometimes people make mistakes. And I really think that Saka, resting Saka, in the way that he did, I think uh, kind of stifled um, a, a really interesting end of the season. I think Saka could have done a lot more. And yeah, and also he gets no protection from referees. So if the FA want really need to realise they need to build the England team around him and a few others, make Saka England captain, and then he'll get the the protection he deserves. Like Gary Kane can do no wrong. He dived for a penalty yesterday. Oh, he dives all the time. He he's loves dives. He's a shit player, and yeah. I, I don't even like him as a human being. So, oh, I can't but he gets away because he's England captain. That's why I remember. I'll tell you a funny story, Danny. Years ago, oh. when I was working in promo promotions in promo, the promo world, there was a FIFA release. Uh, this must have been a decade ago. There was a FIFA release um, in central London, and there was loads of players, professional players at that time, that were turning up and then getting involved. It was so far back that Townsend was still playing for Spurs. That's how far back this was. Okay, yeah. so I was at this thing, and Harry Kane turned up with Townsend, and the reason why I mentioned him. And everyone, and th- th- it was the same season that we beat Spurs 5-1 at home and then 5-1 away. It was that same season, I believe. Um, and all and all these people were taking photos of Harry Kane and putting his arm around him, but they were all doing this behind him. So they were all holding him and doing all of this 5-1 stuff to the point where Harry Kane was so fucking oblivious to it all, completely just removed from the world, that Townsend had to fucking drag him away and go, mate, they're taking the piss out of you. Please fucking just wake up a little bit. We need to. We we got to go. It was it was it was embarrassing. It was like a it was like a a kid, a, you know, struggling with social aspects of the world. And and Harry Kane. That was the my that was my only experience of meeting Harry Kane in real life. I'll just call him a, a, a twat and leave it at that. Right, it's time to close the show. One hour and seven minutes. It's uh, an hour That'll more do. than what we, we wanted to do. That was one. No, what? No, 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 Danny, you're wrong. It's a one hour, seven minutes, and forty seconds <laughs> longer than we wanted to do. Um, that's for fucking sure. That's for fucking sure. Have we got anything else? We've got nothing else. We're all good. Nope. All uh, and we're done. That's it. All right, cool. Well, thanks for everyone jumping in, by the way, and thanks for everybody that's listened to this post as well. I hope that we can give you some shred of light in this darkness that Brighton have provided this evening. A game that we didn't really turn up in. We kind of knew that we were done and dusted after the City game, but it would have it would have been interesting if we kept on going toe to toe with them. Squad depth being the difference maker, and we knew that as well. We're not done. So let's leave it there, shall we? Danny, thank you so much. Where we can where can we find you on the socials? Uh I um at the GFP, at the underscore GFP, and uh but but don't 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 waste your time. I've tried to hardly tweet anything anymore, apart from the odd, true. like I'm watching the film Silo. That's a really good show at the moment to watch. Um, I'm really that enjoying that. I watched uh, a film the other day. It was um, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Very very good. The 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 bloke who plays the Afghani in that, brilliant, magnificent performance. Not so uh, Not just mainly it. TV and film. A little bit about the Arsenal, but yeah, so it's all it's a little bit overwhelming. How about yourself? Yeah, uh, you can find me at DK Justify. I wouldn't recommend doing it, though, uh, for your own sanity. Um, but, yeah, thanks to everyone that's jumped in, guys. You're all freaking awesome, considering circumstances. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, let's hope and pray that we can uh, get rid of this rot early doors against Forest next weekend and then finish the season on a big high. 
at the Emirates against Wolves and then push on to have possibly one of the best transfer windows in our lifetime. We can all hope and pray. But until then, up the Arsenal. Let's fucking go. That's what it's about. As soon as I scored that goal, I was fucking livid. Get down, dog. Splendid business. He nearly caught the bloody thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> So I've just eaten a full quiche. Well, you don't often see them at him. So when you see them in the supermarket, they need to be swagged, microwaved immediately and get the brown sauce on them and bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt.